In this video, we're going to be replacing the camshaft position sensor on this 2005 Honda Element. You will need to remove your air intake box and intake filter housing to access this sensor. So to remove our air intake and air filter box, we're going to need to remove all of these hoses and harnesses attached. We're going to start low and work our way to the back. So down here, you can either disconnect this from here or your throttle body. We'll disconnect it from the top here. I'm just going to press that clip and unplug it. We can set that aside. Have this hose here, which is just going to pull out. A lot of these connections are just going to pull right out. Move these around. Here we actually have a little hose clamp. Okay, that worked. I'm just going to reattach this clamp just so we don't end up losing it. There is one hose clamp connecting this tube to your throttle body. Our hose clamp actually came off. It was completely rusted and corroded. It just fell off. So you will have one more hose clamp down the bottom connecting to your throttle body. Moving back to our air filter box, we have four Phillips or eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna remove them now using the eight millimeter option. So this hose here that we removed from this fitting, we're actually going to pull this right off of this tube, and just spin that right out, we're going to set this aside. You should also have one more hose clamp right here. We don't have one. We will be replacing it. But for now, to remove the front portion of your intake tube, we're just going to pull that right off of the air box. And now we can twist and pull that right off of our throttle body and set this aside. Okay, now the front of your air filter box can come right off. Okay, now you can take your air filter right out. Now to remove your air filter box, you're gonna have two bolts. There's gonna be one back here, and another one right underneath your brake fluid reservoir. going to be 10 millimeter. There's one more straight down here. Okay, we have our last 10 millimeter bolt right here. With those three bolts loosened up and these out of the way, you should be able to now remove your air box. But on the driver's side of your air box, it's still attached here to your intake. We're not going to remove the intake, but we are going to remove the box from that. We're going to spin this hose, pry it right off. And we can now take our air box right out. Our negative terminal here, 10 millimeter nut. Go ahead and back that off now. And set that aside. So our camshaft position sensor is gonna be right here. If you locate your valve cover, your oil fill cap, your last bolt on your valve cover, straight back down there is behind there. The plug is going to be facing upwards. That's going to be your camshaft position sensor. We're going to remove our electrical connection, push in that tab, pull that harness up and away. Underneath here, at a slight angle, there's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. 
We'll go ahead and remove that bolt. Try not to let that bolt drop into the motor. Now these sensors typically are pressed in by force of the bolt and time. Ours is actually pretty loose, but you may have to get in here and press that or force or pry that sensor out. Basically you just want to pull it straight back and out. And there's your sensor. To install our new cam position sensor, we've already done this, but you're going to want to put just a little bit of oil around that O-ring. That's going to help this go in and seat in a little bit easier. You're going to press that right into position. Easiest thing to do is kind of pre-line up your bolt hole and just press it into position. It is a new O-ring, so it will be harder to seat in. sometimes a little twist and push. Once you've got your cam position sensor pushed in as much as you can get it and you definitely want to try to get that as flush and as flat as possible, you can start to thread in your bolt. The o-ring sometimes will pull in with the pressure of the bolt but you don't want to rely on the bolt to pull it all the way in. Sometimes you'll break the sensor, sometimes you'll seat it in at an angle, and this will turn into a leak point. So from here, we're slowly going to turn that bolt in. Let's see if it pulls our sensor in. We're actually going to push on the top to try and bring it in flat. All right, we can tighten down our 10 millimeter bolt. And now we can take our electrical connector, plug it back on. So now we're going to put our filter housing, our air box, into place. First thing we're going to do is move our cables out of the way. Second thing we're going to do is lower our air box down in and then align this hose here. And we did have a missing hose clamp, so we replaced it here. We'll go ahead and lower our air box into place. We're not going to be able to get it 100% lined up until we get this hose on. So now that that's down there, we'll get this hose on. Oh, there we go. All right, so now we can just press this in a little tighter, make sure it's seated 100%. And with an 8 millimeter on this specific hose clamp, yours might be slightly different. I'm going to tighten this down. So now we have one, two, three bolts. They're going to be 10 millimeter bolts to hold our air box in place. And as we removed this one, it actually fell apart and broke. So we're going to have to come up with a replacement for that. But as of right now, we're going to continue to move along and reassemble our airbox. Now we can put our filter back in. Now, just a side note, if your filter looks like this, you want to definitely go ahead and replace it. All right, I'm going to seat that down in there, and now we can put the top of our airbox back on. So now we can reinstall the top of our airbox. Now, as we were removing it, started to fall apart. Now this one's actually frozen and rusted in place. This one's moving freely. This one's also moving freely. Ideally, these would all be fine, or ideally we'd have two opposite sides. So this one should slide in and out of this center or this uh, sleeve here. And it's not moving at all. So which just means it's frozen. You can try and press it back in here and reuse it. But for right now, to move forward, we are going to reassemble with what we have. So we're just going to put this in place. Okay. 
Okay. This one's actually stripped out, so we'll try and use the Phillips head option on that. No, nope. so there's a lot of corrosion in the Phillips area there. So we're just gonna have to try and spin this closed with a pair of pliers or locking pliers. All right, so we've got a pair of locking pliers on here. Now, the reason we're doing this is the head on this is stripped, so it won't take an eight millimeter. It's too big for a seven, and the Phillips option is rusted in. So we only have two screws left on this air box. We want to make sure we get them both tightened down. Now, ideally, we don't have any air gaps here or any air loss coming through the sides here. So we may end up coming up with some solution for these two. For right now, we're going to continue moving forward and reassemble. Now we can put our intake tube onto our throttle body. Now I'm just gonna loosen up our hose clamp just a little more. Now for this, we had to put two hose clamps together. If you can find one hose clamp the right size, ideally that's a better situation. And now we can start to locate the upper end onto our air box, or our filter housing. We've got a little notch here that we have to line up. And we're gonna have to put one more hose clamp up around here. We'll do that at the very end. So now that we're lined up, top and bottom, we're gonna tighten down our hose clamp on our throttle body side. In, eight millimeter on this specific hose clamp. Yours might be slightly different. And now from here, we can start to reattach our hoses and our lines that are attached to this part of the intake tube. We'll start here. We're just gonna press this line in and then push this onto this hose barb here. Now on this side, we have a few more lines We'll start with this one here. We're gonna need a pair of long needle nose or a pair of needle nose. Squeeze this clamp and reattach this line. Just press it right on. Then we can put our hose clamp back in. All right, now this line, I'm just gonna press in. This one already kind of fell into place. It's just gonna press in. All right, so our electrical connection that we tucked down here earlier, we're gonna pop this right back into its little holder and we're going to run our electrical line under those cables, come around and plug it back in. All right, now if you really want to, you pull it back just tuck away that line. Now from here, if we follow these two lines up and backwards, we're gonna put these back into place. Your thicker line is gonna go into the lower lock here. We're just gonna press it right down in. And the upper line, same thing. It's gonna go on the top, just get pressed right in. Sometimes you need a little extra help just use a pair of pliers and we'll squeeze that down in. All right, so up top here, we were missing a hose clamp to start. So again, we put a couple hose clamps together to get the size that we needed. Reconnect our negative terminal. And make sure it's down as far as it'll go. And tighten up our nut. Because that's an odd angle, I had a ratchet nearby just to make sure we're tight. Looks good. When only the best will do, demand TRQ the only company that lets you view before you do.
TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.